Oh, I don't need to be in there. I don't need to be in here. She's the star. I like Hi, seeing sweetie. you. Oh my God, I'm so excited tonight. So, like I told the other ones I interviewed already, you brought me out of semi-retirement. I kind of took a year off. Really? And this is the first theatrical thingy I have done in a year. And I love that. For you. Come on, we're, the, we're special. I love that, thank you. Thank you, okay, so now, you're on the Broadway again. I mean, I just saw you in Little Mermaid not too long ago. Yeah. And not saying anything bad about Little Mermaid, but I'm so glad you're in this. Well, you know, again, uh, I'll never talk smack about Mermaid because oh, no. that is a, a wonderful show, wonderful group of people. But this is, this is something like off the charts, crazy. I would never say no to this. I'm playing myself. Like, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's a piece that I have helped develop for the last four years. I put my heart and soul into it. I love these people. These are my best friends. And even the, all the people at Mermaid were very supportive. They knew. They actually saw a title show when it was off Broadway and that was kind of how they found me for Mermaid. So they they were crossing their fingers that something more would happen for title nice. show. So it all just was very nice of them. I wondered because I was saying I was saying to Sean right over here. I was Hi, saying Sean. what's gonna happen when title of the show goes to Broadway. Yeah, that was always a part of my master plan, and they knew it, and they were very, they were very supportive, and and they knew that if title of show, if the planets aligned, and title of show was going to have that moment to be on Broadway, that I would go with it. So I was lucky. Dancing in the backyard, Kool Aid mustache and butterfly wings, hearing Andrea McCardle sing from the hi-fi in the den. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. So, Thank you. come on, and you're up there, you guys, playing yourself. That never happens, and it happens. So. I know, it never happens, and it happened. And my, my father, who's never seen me on a Broadway show, was in the audience tonight, and uh, that made my head pop off a little bit. And uh, I had to hold my shit together, because um, I love my dad, and I, you know, he means the world to me, as does my mom and my brother. And it was just sort of crazy that they were seeing all of that go down. I mean, everybody's family is in town for the title of show wedding, when title of show <laughs> weds Broadway. It feels like that. And, um, you know, it's been such a wonderful night. We're thrilled. I'm so happy for you. And Thank just so you know, you. Betty Buckley was standing right here before. That's and crazy! So love your big old solo Aww. song there, so. That's nice. And she's a good sport. <laughs> she's a very good sport. We love Betty Buckley, by the way. Yeah. And we That's love awesome. you. Aww. So make you enjoy your party. Yeah. There's a microphone. Did you see that, ladies and gentlemen? Did you see that? Of course, my. Okay, okay, just a little. Uh, oh, wait, you're married. Where do the noses go? The noses can go here. Oh, look, we're on together. See, it's so. I'm so gross and sweaty. I've been letting everybody you're just fine. be solo. Okay. I smell like, I smell like a monkey. <laughs> I look like a lady, but I smell like a monkey. <laughs> That's my new catchphrase. I'm loving that catchphrase. Yeah. How are you? I am great. And you? Come on. Come on. On, on Broadway. Did you Come know you were on Broadway? Ken, did you know that I made my uh, Broadway debut? I just made my Broadway debut. I'm so proud of you. What do you think of that? From me first seeing you at PS122. That's right. In the Wonder Twins and Sparkle That's Bishop, right. an old show she did, and it brought us here today. That's right. And how amazing. Come on, you're playing yourself on Broadway. When does that ever happen? When does that ever happen? When do you ever play yourself on Broadway with really kick-ass material and your best friends? Never. Never. Yeah, no, I and, that. and that it brings you closer together and doesn't drive you apart like behind the music. Oh, yeah. How about that? No Peter Frampton's here. It's because we've had a lot of therapy, Ken. <laughs> a lot of fucking therapy. And... Susan here has actually been kind of a surrogate therapist for me. Me, when I had the despair vampire. The last vampire is the mother of all vampires, and that is the vampire of despair. It'll wake you up at 4 a.m. to say things like, Who do you think you're kidding? You look like a fool. No matter how hard you try, you'll never be good enough. Welcome back, big boy. So, it was these kids. Were you at the show tonight? Yeah, oh yeah, I was there, I was there, crying, crying my eyes out. Me too. But 
you're so great. And also, Betty Buckley was here saying how much she loved your Die Vampire Die song. Uh -huh. She did? Yeah, she was standing right where you are. Betty Buckley said that? You might still be able to smell her. Wait. Okay. But you know what? You smell like Betty Buckley. You smell like a Broadway does star. Does Betty Buckley smell like a million monkeys in a box? <laughs> a box full of monkeys? Well, I'm just so happy for you. I don't know what else to say. I mean, after we took a shower together. We did. Way back when. Roll that footage. We're the cast and title of show, and you're watching That's Kentertainment. And oh we're God. back. Wow. <laughs> we are back. You know how this show works. No, but I'm so happy for you. Happy I don't know. You. He's laughing. I don't know what else to say. I'm proud of you. It's so great to see you. I'm so happy. I, I really am. This. No. I can't either. Except I feel you, so I know what's happening. Hey, hey mister. How are you? What's happening? Look at you making it all the way from there to here, which was not easy. It took me like 45 minutes to it go really 20 did. feet. It is quite the party. Hi. Hi. You know, you've never been on my show before. I know. I'm excited. I was a little bitter and jealous, but now I'm happy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> wearing a little bit of a different hat here, aren't you? I am. For the first time ever, my 11th Broadway opening, personally, I sat in the audience. It was crazy. I, it was so confusing. I, I was so confusing that I actually have contractual house seats for opening night. And I made all my invitations and I gave the list to the company manager and she was like, okay, great, that's one, that's two, okay, great. And then she got to the, the total number of tickets I had and she was like, um, where are you? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, where are you sitting? And I was like, oh my God, I forgot that I need a ticket. I'm not in the show, am I? Nope. So she got me an extra ticket so that I could sit next to my mom, who's never ever missed an opening of mine. And uh, for the first time ever, she's looking at me right now. I'm blowing my mom a kiss. Um, uh, I got to sit next to my mother and feel her pride in real time. And I have to say, that was really, really special for me. I got very, very emotional. It's been a long journey, and I'm so proud of these people. I love them dearly. I think they're not just great artists, but they're really good people. They're my best friends, and, and um, this is our dream come true tonight, for sure. At the end of the show, I, I was like, that ovation was like, what, six minutes Do you long? know what happened? Like, in the middle of it, I was like, I couldn't take it anymore. So I just looked up at the ceiling of the, of, the, of the auditorium. And you know, it's the oldest theater on Broadway, the Lyceum is, 1903. And I was looking at the Lyceum L's and all the architectural detail. And I started thinking about all the shows and the actors and all the billions of things that have gone through that theater in 105 years. And to know that we're a part of that. And I, I really, I just was trying to soak it in and trying to soak it in. And then when the show was over, and Jeffrey was like, you know, where, Michael, where are you sitting? Come up. And I, was, I wasn't going to go. And Betty Buckley leaned across the aisle to me. And she goes, you get up there right now. And I was like, yes, Betty. Okay. Um, and I, the truth is, she knew it was a moment I was never going to forget for the rest of my life. And she was probably watching me look at the ceiling. And she wanted me to really experience it with them. And I'm so glad that I did. It was, we'll never, ever forget it. It was the most amazing night. I've done six, over 6,000 performances on Broadway myself. And this was the best night I've ever had in a theater, ever. When we open tonight.